on or up what is up this is taryn williams and i'm back with a brand new episode of the order up podcast so we're going to keep going from my last episode which was part one of the food industry grind and we're going to keep going with part two so part one i really focused on just kind of getting into the food industry kind of that entry level stage of it kind of going through job interviews you know maybe not getting what you want just kind of getting your foot in the door the way that you have to get the foot in, have the, the get your foot in the door in your way basically everyone's journey is a little bit different so how you get in the door might be the uh, might be different than the way i get in the door maybe the different or maybe a different way than someone else gets into the door things like that so for part two i want to focus on okay now that you get into the door where do we start well, this is where the real grind, <laughs> this is where it really starts. This is where your work ethic has to shine because the next phase, as you get your, as you get your foot in the door is you got to work and you won't get the best schedule. You're the new person. Your schedule will be kind of here and there. It will suck. You probably won't get consistent off days. You'll probably work the shifts that a lot of the, um, the senior members of your team probably get things like that. But this is, this is the phase of your food industry career of your food industry career where you mill, you kind of build your legacy. You build who you want to be as a worker. And one thing my mom always tells me is you can always be professional no matter what. No matter what happens, no matter the situation, you can always be professional. And that's something I take very personally and I very share, uh, cherish that information. And that's how I go about it like every single day, no matter what. No matter what my supervisors might do. My supervisors could be lazy. My managers could be lazy. No matter the situation, I'm going to work my ass off and I'm going to make sure that I do what needs to be done, not just for the restaurant to succeed, but for myself. Because at the end of the day, you work for you. You might clock in at, you know, another company or for a business or for a restaurant, for wherever you may work. But at the end of the day, you work for you. So I go hard for myself. I make sure things are done for me. I make sure that things are taken care of for me. So things are easier on me in the long run. But the team's important. The restaurant's important. Make sure guests are taken care of, but you're also in business for yourself. Because you have no idea. Like, it might be a customer, but they could be a restaurant owner. They could be a head chef or a sous chef. They might be looking for, they might be recruiting people. They, they, they're not telling anyone that they're recruiting, but they're checking you out. You never know who might come in, especially working like in an open kitchen. They see the way you, you know, the way you handle guests, the way you answer questions, the way you handle problems, the way you fix problems. You know, your sense of urgency. All these things are very important, especially in the early phases of your um, of your food industry career, especially within the first 90 days. Because most places, 90 days, is, of course, is your probation period where, like, very, you get very, you get a, um, what's the word I want? You don't get a lot of leeway. You know, you get only a couple of mistakes and you're gone in your probation period where everything is heightened. Every call off, no show being late, tardies, everything's like under a bigger microscope than after you or a magnifying glass, then like after your 90 days is up, your probation is up, then it's a little more relaxed. But in your probation period, you know, everything's bigger and it seems like any little mistake can cause you to lose your job. So you really have to go hard in those first 90 days just to show that you want it, that you want it better, you know, you want it more the person sitting next to you, you know, you're willing to work whenever. Do a required for you if it's working late, coming in early. You know, maybe you're scheduled, you know, from, you know, 9 to 5, but I need you to stay, you know, till 7. You're like, hey, you know, I'll make it happen because you got to prove your worth. And that's something that I feel like a lot of people don't do in the early phases. A lot of people just, oh, I just want, you know, I just want the money, the paycheck. And they're like, well, whatever. After, you know, three weeks, I'm gone. But if you really want to create something that's sustainable and really create a resume that pops you gotta do the dirty work especially in the early phases you know you don't get a lot of say so so you just gotta grind it out you know you gotta go home relax get some sleep you know you probably won't go to some parties you know you probably have to tell you know your friends like hey i can't make it you know i gotta work later hey i gotta be in early or hey i gotta do this or hey i gotta do that like you know you're gonna miss out on some party you're gonna miss out on some trip you're gonna miss out on some fun things in the earliest in the earlier part of your food industry career just because the job is going to take a lot out of you you know until you find your work-life balance you know it's going to be hard and i can speak from you know my own personal experience where you bounce around a lot especially me personally i bounce around like a couple of restaurants 
And within like, you know, four years, I was at three different restaurants. So you bounce around a little bit till you kind of find your niche and you get the experience you need to really last somewhere where you feel confident in where you're at. And a lot of things goes into kind of like where you're at, your schedule, like just your normal duties. Like if you're a prep cook, prep cook is a completely different than line cook. You know, prep sets the line cook up for success. Maybe you're closing, so then the clothes fills in the line cook sets the closer up, you know. Maybe you're overnight, then the closer sets up overnight, you know, it's just this constant cycle of things like it's you know, where you're working and things like that. If you're in school, you have to balance school, home and work. You know, if you have kids, you have to balance the kids, home, work, and of course yourself, because you have to relax. You have to give yourself a chance to, you know, maybe watch a couple of movies, you know. Maybe go out for a drink, you know, smoke, play the game, maybe play D&D. Whatever your thing is that you use to unwind, you have to do it. You have to make time for it because constantly going to work, going home, going to work, going home, that shit gets tiring. That shit will burn you out real quick. And if you have like maybe another hobby on the back end, like maybe you're a rapper, maybe you're a singer, maybe you're an artist, maybe you do sculptures, maybe you cook, maybe you have a YouTube channel, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. You know, you have to make time for those things as well as take time for your adult responsibilities, also take time for work, and then also take time to rest. So it's just like, it's this constant, like, it's a balancing act. You're just juggling. You're just juggling a chainsaw, a flame torch, you know, a bunch of knives, a coyote, a cow. You're just juggling all this shit. You try to make it all happen in a 24-hour period. Because you only get 24 hours in a day, so you got to make that shit count when you can. And it's just, it's rough, you know, especially, but you figure it out. You just kind of, I feel like that the first year is really grinding it out. And you learn what you like. You start learning, okay, you know what? I'm not feeling this menu. I'm not feeling these responsibilities. I'm not feeling this work environment. You know, you really start to learn work environments, I think. And that's something that's very important. You got to find a place that fits you. Maybe if it's too strict, if it's, you know, like maybe you want something a little bit more laid back, something that's not so formal. You know, you start, if you're in fine dining, maybe fine dining doesn't fit you, even though it's, you know, quote unquote, some of the best kitchens, maybe fine dining just doesn't fit your personality. You want something that's a little bit more chill, still, you know, still work hard, still, you know, very professional, but something that's a little bit more chill. You know, maybe you want something a little bit smaller. Maybe you want to check out a diner, but maybe a diner can be too fast, you know, with the ticket system and uh, short order stuff. Maybe that doesn't fit you. Maybe you want to do something fast casual, kind of like Shake Shack, maybe Chipotle. Maybe those type of atmospheres fit you. You know, you just have to start figuring out what works for you. And that's really what the second kind of phase of the grind is. You really start learning what you like and what you don't like. And you, you just start weeding out like, okay, like, okay, maybe I'll leave this job. If you get like, you know, you hop on Indeed or Career Builder or Glassdoor, but you start removing all the jobs that you know for sure you don't want. And you start to really find where you fit, like find a home. And that's one of the most important things is find a restaurant that you can call home where going to work doesn't bother you so much, you know. I've been blessed kind of with my personal situation where I don't mind going to work. This day I don't want to go to work. Like, that's all. But it's not that bad. Like, it's gotten to a point where I'm very comfortable with it. I go into work. Work doesn't feel so strenuous. My days go by pretty fast. And I'm very blessed for that work. I'm not as stressed at work. I just kind of go to work. Okay, do my duties. Check, you know, go through my little checklist, see what I need, and we make it happen. And do that for you know four or five days in a row, and then I get you know I get my off days. So you know I'm very blessed in my situation. But you know, kind of said it in the first part. You know, I've been working in kitchens since 2014, so this will be six total years of restaurant experience. So you kind of you pay your dues. You know, it's not a long time, but. I mean, six years is still a while within the industry, and you, you pay your dues early on. You know, you go through, like, your dishwasher shifts, excuse me, and, like, your grunt shifts and things like that. But then you start figuring out who you are as a worker, you know, your passions, what pushes you, what motivates you, you know, what ticks you off, but what also kind of makes you go a little bit further. And that's what's very important in kind of that next phase of the food industry. It's just kind of figuring out what works for you and really starting to get your rhythm, finally, you know, get that good wave and ride that wave to the top. You know, whether you want to be a supervisor or a team leader or management or owner or CEO, wherever the next step is, you know, 
you start finding out your wave. And that's very important. And I think that's right. Really, the next step is getting somewhere, getting kind of comfortable, like starting to really figure it out. And you start to wipe, and you start to ride that wave. That leads to promotions, that leads to raises, that leads to you know benefits and things like that. So the second, so really, I really want to say like for the second phase, for the second part, to like kind of succeed in the food industry, you gotta find your wave. And your part, you're gonna crash a lot. You're gonna it's gonna be a lot of storms, a lot of nasty collisions. But when you finally figure out your wave, that's when good shit starts to happen. So thank you for checking out this episode, this brand new episode of the Order of Podcast. Um, again, I'm Taryn Williams. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Um, part three of the podcast will drop next Tuesday. So be on the lookout for that. Always and forever slicing, dicing, gaming. It's not just a motto. It's a lifestyle. See you next podcast. Later.